Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. It's a busy day at our studio today, so this is a fast one. I'm afraid we've got cutting in the background, which we cannot stop. Um, some people quite like the wreath I made, which was sort of 3D um, bending in. There'll be a photograph at the beginning, so you'll see it. Um, and I thought I'd make another one. This is a present for someone. Uh, it's a really nice centerpiece for a table, slightly different than the kind of wreath that you'd hang up. Um, really simple to make. So I've started here and I drew a circle. I just used a piece of you know, um, the glass I had and I drew a circle and then I drew a sort of inner circle. Now because it's going to fold in like a donut, um, these pieces sort of, you know, want to come in a bit but not necessarily all be joined. I've started with the layer. This is actually green glass. It's, it looks blue. It's one of the, 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 the um, strikers from Bullseye. I'm not really worried so much about the which colours, use any colours you like, but it's just literally building it up in kind of triangles of glass. But you don't want them the same, you want them to be quite irregular. That one's slightly too long. Um, but building it up a bit, certainly with pieces kind of coming into the middle. Eventually, as we build up layers, we're going to need to make sure that everything is joining so that there's not a piece of glass floating without being joined. But I'm not so worried about that at this point. I'm just literally building up layers of glass. So I'm going to start putting some other coloured glass in. So I put a load of um, different greens on, there's some pea pod and adventuring green on and now I've cut some um, clear with a bit of irid on it. Um, now I want to make sure the irid side is down. I want the shimmer but I don't want the kind of full on irid. So I'm just, I always just scratch the surface and um, actually as you all know that one side of glass is um, rough and one side is smooth. The irid, all the dichroic is always on the smooth side. Um, but running your finger over it I can always sort of tell which is the irid side and um, just making sure I'm getting irid side down. So I've completed that layer and now I'm going to put some canes on. I like to put these, they give a little bit of an extra di dimension. Um, just sort of putting them on a bit haphazard. Okay, um, now I've made, and I'm really pleased with how these came out, I just tacked fused these flowers together. And how I made them was um, with uh, cut strips of, of this, um, this is just tomato red, and then cut them at an angle. And if you've got, I don't have quite enough on that piece, but you basically put Tied together like that and a marini in the middle and tack fuse them on a nice sort of light tack you end up with little flowers like that and it just means it's easier to kind of place them on and they're going to not fall apart because the glass is a little bit uneven i'm just gonna put these on i always find it quite hard with these glasses that look blue now and are going to fire green because it's really kind of, I mean, you know, we deal with a lot of strikers, but it's sort of hard to know your colour ranges and how things are going to really look. Um, I've done quite a lot of these. I've done about 20 of them in all. Um, I think it's sort of nice to, they're so cheap and easy to make, such a little kind of amount of a marini that makes such a kind of um, sort of stunning piece. Um, just one more there, one more there, as I have it. Okay. I'm sure I've shown this tip before, but I always just um, put a blob of gel down anywhere and then just um, use that. You don't want too much because it will sort of, uh, unless you let it dry, it can kind of, um, I think it sometimes can sort of almost like boil as it's drying and um, shift pieces but um, it doesn't really matter if it shifts them on this too much. Anyway, it's a good way to do it. 
So this is now ready. I'm really pleased with it. We've also put some um, of our Ponsettia uh, Marini on and our Christmas um, flower Marini on, um, the different colours. And we've also put some round on the bottom layers that are sticking out a bit further, which hopefully will give a nice um, little bit of extra. And we're now put it in the kiln on a tack fuse and after that uh, we'll show you how to slump it. So the wreath is still in the kiln cooling down um, and while it's doing that I wanted to talk about how we're going to slump it. Um, we're using chalks. Now you've got to imagine with the estimation of the wreath, I'm going to put some photographs up afterwards about how I actually do this. I've put some um, thin fire down just to protect the kiln shelf because it's not as you see kiln washed. We've slightly um, sanded down the edges of the um, chalk so that they sit nicely on the kiln shelf um, and you can see we beveled the edges. We actually used these last time for um, an oval shape so I may have to kind of um, work on them a bit to create a round shape but effectively you can see that we're creating the shape of the circle And without the piece here, it's a little hard to get it exactly right. Um, but once we have the pieces so set up, then we'll put a fibre paper donut on top of that and the ring on top of that. And you'll get to see some photographs of how that all works. And then it will go on, hit on um, in, the, uh, in the kiln to a slumping temperature, which will be in uh, the video later. So this is the finished object. Um, we had a little issue, which is a great lesson learner for everyone out there. Um, bit of thermal shocking. I, I ramped it up a bit more than I would, and it's certainly higher than I would. I have put it on your um, schedules I'm giving you. Um, but we needed a bit more quicker turnaround. Um, and on the way up, because this was quite close to the elements, uh, we've got a bit of a crack here. It actually is fine. The piece is fine, and it still works really well. Um, it's solid. I think it's incredibly beautiful. I'm really pleased how it's turned out. So I love it as a centerpiece with a couple of candles in it in the middle of your Christmas table. Um, it's also a really quick piece to do. I mean, the flowers, you can make them bigger if you want. You just, I cut the strips to make the petals at about 12 millimeters. Um, I'm sorry, Americans, I don't know what that is in inches. Uh, but you can cut them narrow wider and make the flowers bigger or smaller depending on your taste and how big you want the wreath to be. Um, but I made these with my two small daughters in the studio probably in about 15-20 minutes all the flowers got them in and then the wreath probably made it in 20 minutes. It's a couple of firings but I think it's a really good piece and you could do all the greens out of scrap. Um, you can, I think it's nice to mix it up and use the different colours. I like having the transparency at the bottom and then the lighter green opals and the dark green, um, dark aventurine green. Um, I think works really well. Uh, but I think it's a really fantastic piece for a centre of the table and I love the donut slumping. As you will see in the photographs, we actually put the chalk on a bit of a um, some kiln posts to raise it up a bit so that you've got a bit more of a drape um, around. And it just is a really pretty piece with a couple of um, pine cones in there, a couple of candles lit. I think there couldn't be anything nicer for anyone in the middle of their Christmas table. That's all from us here. If you like this video, please subscribe.